Gene Watson has been making music professionally for over 50 years, and in that time, he's achieved major success, even being inducted into the Texas Country Music Hall of Fame. His signature song, Farewell Party, was released in the 1970s, which was the namesake for his Farewell Party band. Gene knows not much classic country gets played on the radio anymore, but there's still a large fan base hungry for traditional country music. His latest album, My Heroes Have Always Been Country, hit stores this week and Kelly Lynn had a chance to sit down with him to talk about his new project. Today catching up with Mr. Gene Watson. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. good. You doing see all right? Yeah, doing great. So you've been busy. I love this new project. Uh, I, well, it's something that I've, I've put a lot of my heart into uh, because I've been out on the road so many years and, and a lot of people don't really realize that there was a time when I didn't have a song to sing you know, uh, long before I had a major recording contract. And people didn't know who Gene Watson was other than around locally where I'm from. And I thought how neat it would be to go back and uh, kind of pay homage to some of these guys that made me who I am with the material that made me who I am. Because these are some of the songs that, that I used to do in the nightclubs, dance halls, honky tonks. Uh, you know, that, that the people really, really loved. And they were recorded by some of my heroes. And, and I thought, I think that would really be neat. It's something I had never done before. And, and uh, I hope the people like it. Absolutely. So 11 songs, Merle Haggard, Dottie West, um, Willie Rob, Nelson. Yeah, Marty Robbins, Willie Nelson. Uh, yeah, Buck Owens, Haggard. Well, like I say, I tried to get as many of them in there as I could that I really admired. You know, it, it's interesting too because you had a body shop and you were working and then doing the honky tonks at night. Talk a little bit about your story and how, I mean, you ended up singing on the Grand Ole Opry. Just someone introduced you, brought you in, and you got to perform there before you even had any of your major hits, right? Yeah, well, I've well, I've worked on cars. That was always my passion as, as a young man coming up. I, I always loved cars, still do. And, and uh, so I was making a living, actually, as a paint and body man, working on wrecked cars. And, and playing in the nightclubs, the honky tonks at night. And, and actually the Wilburn brothers heard me playing at a, at a place down in the Houston, Texas area called Champions Ballroom. And uh, they said, who is that guy? And they asked around and I didn't know it, but the next thing I knew they wanted to meet me. And I met with them, they invited me to come to Nashville and uh, we dipped down into their publishing company and I demoed several of their songs. Uh, uh, Teddy took me in the recording studio and I recorded him and, it, and it, oh, it was just great. I went out and got to do a show with them in, in North Carolina and came back to Nashville. They got me on the Grand Ole Opry at the Ryman Auditorium. Wow. And let me tell you, I, yeah, there's no, you know, nervous is a pretty good word, but there's no word for what I was. <laughs> and, and what was so crazy was they had me down to do one song and I got a standing ovation and I had to do two. <laughs> oh, man. So it was, and uh, it's hard to top it, that. What's uh, yeah. the bar is that high with it, a standing ovation? And it was just, it was just phenomenal. And, and after that, I, I went back to playing the nightclubs and everything back down where I'm from. But I didn't know whether anything would ever become of it or not. And, and I didn't uh, take it for granted or anything like that. In other words, it wasn't a life or death situation. It, it actually, it was not one of my goals in life. Oh, you're kidding oh, me! No, you were um, one of the only few no. I've heard said that. So, and then it turned out, what was one of your goals? Well, I, I was. I, well, the only thing I wanted to do was just stay in cars, work on cars, because I was into painting and and custom pinstriping and custom paint jobs and all. And I and I loved that. But singing was something that was not out of the ordinary at all. My whole family were singers. Okay. And and we all started out singing I guess in church and at home and all that and the the sibling harmonies and all that so singing wasn't out of the ordinary for me that was that was every day wherever I was working whatever I was doing they were gonna hear me sing you know that was just part but of it. But you me. weren't looking for it as a career? Oh, no. no, I never dreamed of being an entertainer a recording artist of any any type and I was working the the uh, the nightclubs down there and, and a couple of guys by the name of Roy Stone and Russ Reeder uh, heard about me and went out to listen to me and asked me if they would, they asked me, they said, if we'll take you to Nashville, uh, would you like to do some recording? And I, and, and, and I thought they was kidding, but <laughs> they, they were kidding. Count me out of future plans you might be making. There's 
song in there I used to do called Count Me Out. And I thought, I got to do this song, you know, and, and, and all of these songs were that way. They were some, they were songs that meant so much to me that they got me through the nights when I was on stage and people were dancing and drinking and having a party and all that. And, and, and that's exactly why I came back to do this, this project right here. They're all the songs that I love, but I done them from the heart. I done them the way I wanted to do them. And, and, uh, so we'll get to hear your version and your take on them and, yeah. and they got you through the night. I love that. I love the great Ray Price. I just, uh, you know, make the world go away. I, I was doing that on stage actually before Ray passed away. And, and we had so many fans saying, man, you need to record that. You really need to record it. You know, the way I was saying it. So we did. And, and I'm dedicating that to all the fans out there. Walk through this world with me, the George Jones thing. Uh, we dedicated that more or less to remembering him. And, and, and uh, this, this project just really means a lot to me. We're about out of time for today's show, but we do have a few copies of that new album full of classic country music up for grabs from Gene Watson. If you'd like to enter this week's drawing for a copy of My Heroes Have Always Been Country, then head over to InsideMusicRow.com to get signed up. If you want more IMR on demand, check out Zeus.com for past shows, plus all the music videos you could ever hope to watch. Don't forget the Zeus app to take your favorite music with you on the go. We're going to leave you today with this week's Artist on the Rise. Here is Josh Thompson with his latest cold beer with your name on it. Until next time, I'm Kelly Sutton for Inside Music Row. I'll see you again real soon.